This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to be discussing five common springtime hazards for your dog. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video is spring. First of all, I'm so happy to see that the snow is finally melting, at least down low, and the sun is out. Been in, in this time, as the snow melts, it brings about four or five pretty common hazards that you should be aware of for your dog. So what I brought over today is Pippi. She's behind me, and there she is there. She's our neighbor's dog. So Pippi loves to eat stuff. She loves to get into stuff. She's gonna be a great example for me to use as far as to show you what you need to be aware of because if someone's gonna get into something, it's gonna be Pippi. First one I wanna discuss is antifreeze or ethylene glycol. So right now as the snow melts, I mean, this is the time when you're really likely to see it. And so as you can see in the background, there's my car. We got Pippi sort of sniffing around looking to see if there's something she could consume. And, you know, as the snow's all melting, there's a whole lot of fluid coming behind that vehicle. So if this was an older vehicle, or someone really wasn't being cautious and putting in the antifreeze, it'd be really easy for some of that antifreeze to accumulate it underneath the vehicle on that frozen ground. And now is the time that it's melting and much easier for your dog to potentially get into. The big thing with antifreeze is first, most of the time it's gonna be a greenish looking color. So just be really aware looking around for it. And especially when you're walking your dog. If you suspect that your dog has gotten into, into antifreeze, you need to be seeing your veterinarian as soon as possible. Inducing vomiting, you have a really short window of time before it does pretty serious and, and in some cases on, often permanent damage to the kidneys. The second thing I wanna have you guys think about are ticks. Right now, as soon as it gets warm, that's when they're awakening after sort of just hanging out on those tree branches or stick branches or wherever. And I mean, they're waiting to attach onto a deer and or your dog uh, for a blood feed so they can sort of continue their life cycle. So right now as it's getting warmer, this is a time when you're gonna potentially see them. So with having Pippi, you know, hanging out underneath those bushes, uh, once again, that's potentially how she's gonna get her, give herself a tick. The easiest thing I suggest for ticks is just thoroughly checking your dog after they've been outside. Especially if you're going into areas where it's, you know, where it's bushy, you know, ticks are present. Any of those really hotter south facing slopes. Just, you, just, you know, thoroughly going over your dog, especially going underneath those ears, those cracks and crevices. They love to go around the head, hide under the flaps of your dog's ears. So just really thorough, thoroughly checking them every time you're out before you start thinking about some of those toxic insecticides. The third thing I want you to think about are parasites. Uh, so right now, if you look around, you see all this water running off. Yes, there's also dog poop in areas where probably shouldn't be, but I'll show you some here. So Pippi, who's liking to check stuff out, I mean, she just as soon lick something, you know, some of that water running off or having a little extra sniff of what's on the ground. Real easy way for her then to ingest some type of internal parasite, and typically a, a, a dog roundworm. Um, yes, they're very easy things to treat. I mean, it's one of the safest conventional veterinary medication that is used for treating roundworms, Pyrantel. As you guys can see there, Pippi is also checking out whatever's coming out of the snow. Um, the other point I wanted to mention was salt. So a lot of people, are, we were using salt just to keep the ice off, and especially on our, our paths, on our you know, walkways. So you can have really high concentrations of salt. So a couple issues there. First of all, it can, it can make your dog sick just if she consumes enough of them. Secondly, it can really it can be quite irritating to their paws, especially if we're dealing with some of those chemical de-icers. So if you see sort of, a, it look, almost looks like a whitish salt-like salt -like sort of residue on the uh, on the path or on the road, just, just really thoroughly wash off your dog's paws after going out for a walk. And it's not a bad idea, period, just to do anyway, especially this time in the spring. Good girl, Pippi. And I think Pippi would be pretty good about letting me do it. Ugh. He's also excited because she knows I've got some treats. Good girl, Pipster. There's actually supposed to be five points, but there's five and six things I wanna 
discuss. Uh, so in particular, if you're, you have a puppy, um, the big concern I would have would be for a, a virus called parvovirus. And, and it's a virus that lives pretty heartily uh, in the soil. And it's the one vaccine that I strongly recommend all of you puppy owners get. I mean, there's usually a series of two boosters at eight weeks and 12 weeks. Um, and, but it causes a pretty serious bloody vomiting diarrhea and, and some puppies die from it. But it's fairly easily preventable with, with those two single dose vaccines. Pippi, you know, is an adult dog. She's been fully vaccinated as a pup. She's gonna have great immunity. Generally for most, most dogs, 95% of dogs, if they're gonna get parvovirus, it's in that first year of life. So that's when you look, wanna look at getting those two vaccines. And after that year of life, either one they've been exposed to it because it's pretty ubiquitous, ubiquitous in the environment so then they've already got natural immunity. Um, or two, you've had those series of puppy boosters and you're gonna have, your dog's gonna have more enough than lifelong immunity to prevent them from ever, get, ever getting parvovirus. And the last one I wanted to discuss was compost. So once again, you've got these composts that have been frozen or under snow all winter. Snow is melting and sure enough, they're in different states of decomposition. Some have had bacteria working on them, some haven't. So you can have a fair amount of mold in some of these composts. Be quite toxic to our dogs. You I know, mean, a real common reason why I would see dogs on emergency call here in Nelson was they'd be getting into compost, they'd be ingesting some type of fungus or mold, something that's not composted properly with bacteria and causing them to seizure. Thank you guys for watching this edition of NRA Secrets. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to like this video, click up there to subscribe, and lastly, go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.